You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Go, go. Don't waste no time. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. What a week it has been. Um. As you can see on YouTube, if you're listening, you can't see. I am back in the UK, got my setup, and it feels great. But the sun, the weather, the vibe of Miami and Florida, I miss it already. Before we delve into this Seahawks review, which is going to be a lot of fun, uh, make sure you subscribe to all of our social media platforms. And if you're feeling extra generous, then head on over to Patreon forward slash Go Time Dolphins and join us there. We have stuff like Easy Money, Extra Point, as well as some other stuff, including fantasy coming in the very near future. But, Richard Harley Touche, how are you? It's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm your boy, Charlie Touche. Got my co host, Kadeem Simmons, with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Uh, like Kadeem mentioned, you know, uh, everyone knows Kadeem was in town for week one and two. Uh, flew back. I hope your trip was good, bro. How was your trip? Yeah, overall, the trip was good. Um, in true fan fashion, landed Sunday morning. Um, didn't even unpack, had something to eat quickly. And then headed down to the Hippodrome for the early kickoffs and then obviously Dolphin Seahawks. But no, the trip was amazing. Um, endless memories that I will never forget. And I cannot wait to return next year. Hey, where's your panic meter at? Dolphins are one and two. Um, Ten being the worst. Like, yo, panic. Like, yo, sound the alarm panic and one being panic why would i panic where's your panic meter at um two maybe three um and i think it's that low because i think you can see why the team are playing the way they are in terms of oh everything that's going wrong with this team so far can be fixed whether the team can fix it is another issue. But, you know, we've had conversations in our private group chats and stuff like that. If I was the Bengals or the Jags, I'd be panicking right now. But as a Dolphins fan, yes, there's concerns, but panic? Nah. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Why would you panic if you were the, 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 the Jags or the Bengals? Because I have a healthy quarterback and I'm 0-3. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and... No one wants to have the conversation, but both those quarterbacks have been paid a lot of money and they're stinking. Like, I think I saw a stat the other day that the, Do- that the Jags have one win in the last 12 games. And I think like CJ Befford beat the Panthers, something dumb like that. Like, Trevor Lawrence, it'd be very interesting to do like a mid season quarterback rankings episode because I feel like we've gone from there's 32 good quarterbacks to Maybe like four or five. Everyone else thinks either you either stink or you're injured. But yeah, I'm not panicking because we have a injured quarterback, and because of that, this team is suffering. You get two are back, and you know, hopefully things return back to good. So it's crazy that you said all of this because we didn't even start the episode yet. It's like I didn't even get to say anything that I wanted to say. Prior to week one, the season didn't even start yet. And I think I'm on the way to the game, actually, to the Jaguars game to meet you and everything. And I told LB, I'm like, bro, Lamar Jackson was a two-time MVP. And when we did the quarterback ranking, there was no way I could justify putting Tua above Lamar Jackson, winning two MVPs, coming off an MVP, right? I was like, 
but I, I feel like Tua is better than Lamar Jackson. You know what I'm saying? And I, this is not a quarterback record episode. And I'm like, yo, but there is no way I could really, like, vocalize it. You know what I'm saying? So me, with my unbiased, I'm like, yo, I can't I can't defend this. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't do it. Um, and then you know how I feel about injuries. Joe Burrow is, yo, until, uh, like, he was injured. So he has a, I don't want to say a pass, but it, he kind of, like, stays – stays where he, he doesn't lose anything he doesn't gain anything all right so the same thing when someone gets hurt i'm like all right whatever what do you think the panic meter is in dolphins nation like oh, short answer 10 full, right. full panic 10 all right cool i th I, I thought that's what it might have been and i and let me tell you how i have arrived where i arrived I, I want to say my panic meter is like, like at a one or a two, bro. Like it's crazy that you said this too. <clears throat> I think, and this is just all like just me, just just being a dolphin fan and just like, man, like how do we get here type stuff? As as Kadeem's Wi-Fi goes, goes uh a wall. I will say it is my belief that those who are panicking and if you are panicking you have all the freedom and right to panic you you can you can feel how you want to feel you know what i'm saying like but I, I don't i don't know how you got there but i'm just thinking i think those are two of non-believers bro like i think the people who are like running and, and running around and heads falling off like i think those are the like two of non-believers and I think people who believe in Tua are more so they're obviously where like more subdued, like, man, that's that sucks. You know what I'm saying? And no one wants to start one and two. And dang, like I really was had expectations for the season. Uh, but we'll be good when Tua comes back. I think the other people, the, those who are panicking are, are the ones who are never really in on tour and, and if you weren't in on tour that's, that's fine you could still be like oh well he hasn't won a playoff game he hasn't showed me nothing i can't believe it i ain't gonna lie kadeem and and that could that could be there could be no truth to that that's just me thinking like i don't know if that's true or not that's just what i believe but i got a new take kadeem and it's a funny one to some and maybe to others it's not gonna be so funny you ready As to a, as to a, as Kadeem nods his head on the audio podcast, he he shook well, his head. Yes, he's ready. I shook my head because I don't know how bad the Wi Fi is. So I was like, if I speak and it sounds bad, then I was like, thumbs up, you know, apologies. So here's my new take Coach McDaniel came to this team. We went to two straight playoff appearances, the best offense the in the past. 20 years, 20, 20, 20 something years. First time in the top 10 since 96 or something like that. Uh, had the best offense on paper uh, uh, statistically and the sixth best offense statistically. And a lot of credit went to Coach McDaniel. Like, yo, Coach is, is, is all right. We finally got someone who, who, who knows this stuff. And some people call him a genius and look at the scheme and look at the offense. It's super sexy. My new take is Kadeem McDaniel isn't the one to get credit for all the success. Success is Tua, bro. And I'm like, dang, bro, that's crazy. Cause there's nothing that I could. I don't want to say there's nothing that I could do to support that, but I I just feel like if it was Coach McDaniel, and I want to be very fair, it's both of them paired together while we have this success. You know what I'm saying? But if you had to give credit to one, like who do you think? gets credit for the success that we are having meaning in the past two seasons right the offense looks so good who gets the credit if you had to pick one i can't give it to coach no more bro like every time tua leaves the the team the team looks like 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 the the the, the 2019 dolphins you know what i'm saying with with, with flores it looks so bad kadeem it looks so terrible though like 
And coach is still there. Coach isn't hurt. Coach isn't on concussion concussion protocol. You know what I'm saying? Like it's supposed to be next man up, next quarterback. Shout out to Skylar Thompson. Started the drive inside the seven yard line. Didn't get in in the box. More than once, I think. But who cares? I'm not. I'm not keeping score. Actually, I am because I thought he started inside the 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 fifteen twice in in his previous game and still didn't get in the box. So I don't know, Kadeem. Uh, I thought I said Skylar Thompson wasn't it. I got a little backlash for it. Am I tripping, bro? Um, no, you're not tripping about Skylar Thompson. Um, I think what's interesting to what you just said is that quick, quick question and. The question will make sense. Do you think Mike McDaniel has changed in his two and a bit years in Miami? What do you mean by change? Just his personality, his demeanor, the way he talks, the way he acts. I I, I believe there's some comfort. Yeah, I think we all change though. I think we all like I think there's there's a for everyone, like just in life, not even just football, but as a person, I think you're like a tree. Like you grow and then like like leaves grow and 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 branches grow and you're always gonna you're gonna look different, you're gonna change. Uh change is all is is non stop. So I say that because I've seen people on social media, and again it's only social media saying that coach needs to go to like speech lessons and change the way he speaks. And I'm like, yo, he's he's always been like this. The way he, and that's actually a really personal attack for some. Like, if you don't like the guy because of your coaching, fair enough. But to attack him for something which he's always been, again, mm-hmm. just say just say you don't like the guy and keep it moving. I think on our annual award show, we gave MVP to Tyree Kill, but kind of mm-hmm. said that it's probably to his award because once he comes out. This team does not look the same. And I had a conversation with Five Yard Lee in relation to the Seahawks game and saying that Skylar Thompson being in this offense for the exact same time as Tua. Mm-hmm. And my door just goes, give me two sex. Goodness. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So back to my take about uh, the success of the Dolphins being on Tua and not uh, Coach McDaniel. I think, I think. Kadeem was about to get into that a little bit. I just feel like, yo, you, you would think we could move the ball just a little bit. Can we get a couple first downs? And it doesn't happen. And again, like, it's just because two is in there. Like, coach should be able to, yo, if coach is, if coach, once upon a time, we're like, oh, coach might be coach of the year. Nah, bro. You can't have coach of the year if you can't get first downs when your quarterback isn't in there. Um, and I think I think if, if if Coach McDaniel, and I don't want to wish this on nobody, let's just say Coach McDaniel got the chicken pox and couldn't coach the team for two weeks. We'll just we'll just say that because I don't want him to get I don't want to put a sickness on him. But if Coach McDaniel got the chicken pox for two weeks, y'all don't think two would be like more successful than what coaches without each other? You know what I'm saying? Like what does the how stagnant Coach McDaniel is without Tua? I don't see that if Tua didn't have coach. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead, Kadeem. No worries. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the point me and Lee were kind of talking about was that McDaniel probably done Skylar Thompson a disservice in not tailoring the offensive scheme to what Skylar Thompson is good at. Um, be it stubborn, be it whatever you want to call it, he probably could have dumbed it down, you know, in quotes um, for Skylar Thompson. But at the same time, it's Thompson, you've been here for three years now, or two, you know, yeah, three years to two and a bit, um, basically. If you're struggling this much, then there's a bigger issue. And again, people will say, Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's only been two years. I thought it was three years. I thought he was might... drafted the same, he wasn't drafted in the same draft classes too. No, he wasn't. So no, he, he's, he's, he's... So this is this is Skylar Thompson's third season. Yeah, he was drafted the Mike McDaniel year because his rookie year was the oh, playoffs. Right. He, hey, no, 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 I'm big tripping, big tripping. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm big. No. no, 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 no. That, that's right. I thought, I thought it was. I thought he was drafted. I thought he was in the McDaniel's. Um, 
Yeah, I thought this was McDaniel's fourth year. All right, you're good. So this is Skyler's third year. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've seen people say, well, how do you look in training? And all that kind of stuff. And in, in a very long-winded way of getting to the point, I don't run for too long. I feel like had Mike McDaniel come down the offense, you know, made it a lot more simple against the Seahawks, people would say, where's all the motions? Where's all this? Why? All that kind of stuff. It's... It was a lose situation at the same time. Skylar Thompson should have done a lot, a lot better. Um, but again, this isn't just a Skylar Thompson issue, it's a backup quarterback issue. It's since Mike McDaniel has arrived in Miami, when Tuba isn't on the field, Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill don't get the ball. No quarterback can get the ball to Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. And as a coach, as an offense, we need to work out why is it there's only one quarterback out of a possible four or five that we've tried, who can find our two biggest weapons. And to pass it back on to you, for everyone who says that anyone can run this game, once again, it's a lie. Sure, yes, there are guys outside of, you know, Skylar Thompson, Mike White, Tim Bolt, all that kind of stuff. But to make it sound like this is a very simple scheme to, to run and execute is an absolute lie. That's, that's that, that plays into my point. When... Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins, and Justin Jama Justin Jefferson, uh, some of these receivers that we say are quarterback proof. You would like to think if you make thirty million dollars a year that you could be quarterback proof in Tyreek Hill, and and your coach or your play caller isn't scheming up plays where you get eleven targets a game and and nine receptions a game, and you're getting off for at least 50, 60, 70, 80 yards, and that's not happening. So that that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, coach has to take some accountability for sure, no doubt about it. Uh, Tim Boyle comes in, and the offense looks a little bit better. Am I tripping? Like, I thought the offense ran a little bit better with Tim Boyle. Did it not, Kadeem? It it did, but I think people would argue at that point the Seahawks just did not care. All right, so cool. you're basically getting garbage time. No, no, I, I I got you, I got you. But I I, I was just. I, I just felt like his pocket presence was better than Skylar Thompson's. Um, his awareness was better than Skylar Thompson's. Like, uh, halftime, I think it was halftime, Skylar Thompson runs out the pocket on the last play of the half, which was debatable in itself. Why would you call that play? And Coach came out to say, well, we did it before, and we, we got a penalty, and we got in the field goal range, so we was looking for something like that. And there was only two people kind of like in play to to for Skylar to throw it to. So, yeah, I understand, yo, there was nobody open in Skylar Thompson's defense. But Skylar, bro, this is the NFL. You think the play is going to like go on for nine seconds? Like you got to do something. Like if no one's covered, you, bro, you were already out the pocket. You could have ran, ran out of bounds, went down half over. Bro, you took a sack that was you didn't have to take. You took a hit, a major hit that you didn't have to take. His just awareness is just not there, bro. And we was talking about how long he's been on the team. I ain't gonna lie, it looked like he's a rookie. It looked like that was like his first game ever. That's this is unacceptable. So we're gonna run through some things. Uh, Dolphins ran 28 plays in the first half. 20 were designed pass plays. This is according to Adam Beasley. Shout out to Adam Beasley. Which of the worst starting? Oh, all right, here we go. Dolphins ran 28 plays in the first half 20 were designed pass plays with the worst starting quarterback in football shout out adam beasley uh defense gave up oh no 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 no! i'll, I'll come back to that one that's for you kadeem um miami dolphins are currently dead last ranked 32nd in the nfl in points scored with 33 the Carolina Panthers scored 36 in one game. You know how how bad we were talking about the Carolina Panthers, bro? You know what I'm saying? You know how we went from the most scored and feared offense in football to the worst uh, in, in football? Uh, yeah, I understand you don't have a quarterback, but 33 points? You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to the uh, easy money pick of the week. We took the under. Yo, just smash the under. We're not going to score points. And perfect segue, Kadeem. 
the Dolphins almost gave him the over. Like, yo, what's going on here? 17 points in the first quarter. And this one is for you, Kadeem, because last time it was, oh, field position. They they start off in bad field position, and it's on the offense. And I, or it's on offense. And we kind of had like a back and forth. I'm like, all right, just because you have bad field position doesn't mean you give up a touchdown on a 67-yard run play in one play. So it doesn't matter where the field position is if you're going to let the person score in 70 yards on one play. Here we go, Kadeem. It was first quarter. 17 points were given up in the first quarter. Obviously, for end of the podcast, Javon Holland gets beat deep. Um, no one wants to see it. And yes, the defense did bounce back, didn't give up any points after that until like uh, kind of like the fourth quarter or something like that. But are you ready to say, all right, the defense? Like, why can't we give credit when credit is due and then accountability when accountability is due? Like, all right, the offense, the offense is, is held accountable for this and the defense is held accountable for that. Why does it have to be one or the other? Um, I understand where you're coming from, but it must have been, was it Tuba's first year? If not McDaniel's first year. And we spoke about the, this Dolphins defense and was like, you know, basically, if the Dolphins got 21 points, they'll win every single game because the defense has given up like 16 or 17. I still kind of feel like, you get off the outside of the Bills game, that's where this that's where this defense is and it's, it's kind of shown it it's it starts off somewhat slow it it will give up one big play and if you see Geno Smith break down that touchdown to DK Metcalf listen fair play to the offense they got the look they wanted Holland broke or bit on the on the DK in route to allow DK to take it upfield and the touchdown so yeah the defense gave up 17 points in the first half if not like with the first quarter or something like that. The offense put up three points per game. I, as I said in one of our group chats, watching the Dolphins in the first three games, especially without Tua, yeah, definitely without Tua, it's like watching the favorite planes last year when Aaron Rodgers went down. And the defense, yes, they gave up, you know, 20 points. They might have given up a big play or one play touchdown. But for the majority of, of those games, they kept the team in the game and the offense just done nothing. And I'd, I'm not saying the defense is perfect. Yes, there are definitely, it definitely needs to improve. But I can't blame a defense which is essentially shutting out teams in the second half, asking the offense to, hey, score some points, and nothing's coming good of it. But you can't you can blame them for giving up 17 points in one quarter. Like I, I understand what you're saying. Like I, I preface my comments with that. Like, yeah, oh, yeah it's a whole you. game. It, it was a whole game. You didn't let them score after that. But at the same time, you put your off you matter of fact, you put your offense in a tough situation. Like, not the other way around. That you know, there are times where the offense put the defense in bad situations, but in, in this particular case, without tour. The defense put the offense in a tough situation because now how is the offense without a starting quarterback supposed to come back from a 17-point deficit after one quarter? So it was that's a like, that, that, I feel like, like, yo, it's okay to be like, defense stuck up the joint. You know what I'm saying? Now, I understand they didn't let nobody score after that, but how are you supposed to overcome 17 points? And even with Tua, it would be a task to overcome 17 points. But the difference is, is that with two, the Dolphins probably wouldn't be behind seventeen points because they would have scored a touchdown at the very least. So, but, like, but, 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 so like, that so bomb didn't have nothing to do with the offense. So, so no, 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 no. That's it. It, but 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 that that's the thing is that no defense is perfect. So the de so okay, you take away in the both the Bills game and the Seahawks game, the basically the one play touchdown called that seven points. The Dolphins didn't lose either of those games by seven points. They got destroyed in both those games because the offense hadn't scored essentially any points. But since uh, the Dolphins have scored what, three points since two has been out, and that's a game and one quarter. And yes, the Dolphins gave up 17 points against the Seahawks. The Dolphins had scored three, but if the offense scored a touchdown, and the very least it's either 7 17 or 10 17. And you're looking at a one score game. I'm not saying the defense is absolved of any blame but like i said they might start off the half bad but 
the Dolphins' offense is playing the entire game bad. Yes, the defense have have left a mountain to climb, but the only reason it's a mountain instead of a molehill is because the offense is basically giving us absolutely nothing. I, I disagree, bro. Like even 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 like I'm only talking about the Seahawks game because this is the this is the evidence we have. It's our last game. And yeah, you I hear what you said about the Buffalo game. I understand that. And I'm not saying that wasn't true either. I'm not saying that the offense put the 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 defense in a bad position. I'm not saying that didn't happen. All I am saying is it doesn't matter when we talk about the Buffalo game, it didn't matter where the field position was. If you're only going to let them play score on one play, it doesn't matter where that field position is. No more. If, on 70 yards, by the way, 67 yard run. Like it doesn't matter where the field position is, but in this particular game, here we are, they kick a 50 something yard field goal. Cool. You got to stop. That's three points. They beat you on the bomb. Okay, it happens. It's football. That's ten points. Uh, some I don't remember the other touchdown. Seventeen points. It's so seven. I'm, I'm looking. So sorry, I'm looking now. So it's got Jason Myers field goal, fifty six yards. Um, Zach Charbonnet four yard run. That makes it ten. Zip. Right, right. There, there was J- a Jason Sanders run. There was a yeah, run. Jason, Jason Sanders gets his field goal, having missed one prior, if I remember correctly. So it's ten three. And then, yeah, that's when you get the one-play touchdown. So the one-play touchdown comes after the Dolphins are 10-3 down, but the offense has been on the field multiple, at, at, at least twice, and only has three yards. Am I incorrect? It's the first quarter. It's not the fourth quarter. No, no, the no, defense, no, I, but, but that's what, if you say, oh, well, uh, the defense was on the field too long. Bro, it's not It's not like it's the whole game where, all right, the defense got a – defense been on the – like it's a time of possession and the defense been on the field for 40 minutes. Defense only – it's the first quarter, bro. Like, you, you could play in the first quarter. That's what I'm saying. And and again, but, but that, that goes back to I'm not excusing the one-play touchdown, which – I'm giving credit to the Seahawks for designing the play, which makes Holland bite down and give up fair enough. But I get the impression that what you're saying, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, what you're basically saying is this defense has to be perfect for four quarters. No, I'm not. I'm, you said correct me if I'm wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm not saying they have to and be that's perfect. Fine. I'm, saying, I'm saying all I'm saying is, when the defense was the bed, we gotta say the defense was the bed. That's it. And, I'm not saying, and, and they did. What, well, I'm not saying, like, like I feel like I feel like it's oh the defense went the bed because the offense gave them too much water to drink before bed. No, like no, no bro, no, no, like, no. no. I'm, I'm not saying. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm, it's okay I'm, if they both went the bed, but let's just say they both went the bed. This is like I said, back to back games, one play touchdowns, guys, inexcusable, not good. I would argue. The Seahawks one play touchdown was better than, in terms of an offensive play, was better than the Bills one. We're focusing on the Seahawks. All I'm saying is that the one play touchdown happened to make it 17 3, but the Dolphins' offense just stunk. And one play touchdowns, no matter how good your team, team are, are going to happen. It's just going to happen. If, if it doesn't have sense. to happen though. It doesn't have to happen. You said it's going to happen. Of course like it does. It, yeah. No, no, you know, no, 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 no. Like it's football. Like you can play defense and not let it happen. Like every oh, team oh, 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 in the oh, NFL, oh. every team in the NFL doesn't give up one play drives. That doesn't happen. Like it, it doesn't have to happen. That to me is that to me sounds like someone who expects Chris Gray and the Dolphins to get every single draft pick right. Dude, hold on, no hold one's perfect. Real quick, because you know, you know, we're running short on time. How many one play drives have the Dolphins had in in last season when we had the, the super duper sexy offense? How many one play drives did the Dolphins offense have? If that's the case, one play drives. Can you can you if you had to guess? Um, I'll probably say like three or four. I I doubt it. I, I say it's less than that. And and, and it, off the top of my head. I don't remember any one play drives last year and I could be wrong, but I remember one, one play drive the year before with Trent Sheffield took it to the house on the first play of the game. It doesn't happen, bro. Like it, one play drives, like when your defense like stays on the bench and forgets that they're on the field. Look, we, we can't keep going back and forth with this. We will eventually entertain this, but we can't right now. Um, we're going to get into bonus time soon. Uh, 
before we get into bonus time, I want to do this on this side of of bonus time. Shout out to the Go Time Dolphins podcast, uh, Fantasy Football League. Um, hey, that's crazy, Kadeem. Did you win this week? I did. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Before we before we go there, so uh, the standings of the Veterans League. Uh, I forget about this all the time, and I hate I I gotta do this. But Charlie Two Char- Championship Chuck, Charlie Touche, number one, three and zero. Oh. Uh, then Sherry Steve, number two, three and zero. Oh. Uh, Flipper May Mick, former champion, three and zero. Oh. Uh, the average white guy, fourth place. Uh, returning champion Miami Fendetta, fifth place. Ty Freak Waddle, sixth. Uh, SWFL seventh CDs nuts eighth and Fanish is ninth and same old Dolphins Josh Casker is tenth. Um, everyone going through all kinds, <clears throat> all kinds of fantasy football injuries. There's no one immune to the injuries this season. I'm sure you got somebody hurt on your team. Yeah, Kadeem. I think I had Mixon out. That right, right. Uh, what, what's what's the uh, big be, the beginners league looking like? Um, so apologies for not knowing the all the names of the owners, but just, yeah, just got the little notification that I, I got the dub, um, 96 to 87. You know, just saying, dub, the dub is a dub. Um, <laughs> so the league is looking like you can tell I don't look at this league too much uh league so shout out to arthur folk sake who was two and one uh basically there's two four six teams at two and one arthur folk sake stranger for danger he's got heel simon myers of the uk dolphin dolphin uk podcast so jimmy giants wake 91 and hawk tour are all two and one to infinity and beyond my own hawk two are one and two, as are Phil's, Finn's, and Robin's. And then we have two in the pink, are O and three. Bro, uh, he's got Hills, a pretty dope, um, pretty dope fantasy football name. But he don't even have Hill on his team. That's crazy. Yeah, I've got Hill. Was, so, Kadeem, did you, did, 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 did the people need to know, did you start Tyreek Hill? Uh, no, I did not. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. who did you start in, in place of Tyreek Hill? Uh, week three. So, my lineup was Jared Goff, uh, JK Dobbins, and Brian Robson Jr. I started at wide receiver, Devontae Adams, and Stephon Diggs. I started Kelsey at tight end, starting to regret that pick. Um, I flexed uh, Scary Terry. And I had the Lions defense. Um, my kicker got me zero points, bro. Yeah, ty- yeah. Go ahead. I was say Tyree Kill got seven points. Yeah, like, bro. Uh, it's crazy because when you act when when we were doing like sit them start them, I'm like, yo, if you got Tyree Kill, here are some people that you can you could bench him for. You said Brian Robinson Jr. and and Terry McLaurin. And I like, yeah, I will start Brian Robinson Jr. over Tyreek Hill. Not only did I say I will start Brian Robinson Jr. over Tyreek Hill, I also thought you meant Brian Thomas Jr. from Jacksonville. And I even say it if you play it back. I say Brian Robinson Jr., I will start him. And I continue to talk and say Brian Thomas Jr. as, a, as if they were the same person. But I would have started both of them boys over Tyreek Hill. And actually, they both had more points. I think one had nine and one had eight. But still had more than Tyreek Hill, bro. And this is a problem moving forward for the Miami Dolphins. Um, <sighs> so we'll, we'll get into bonus time, man, and keep it short. But y'all know what time it is. Stay positive. Test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. Got to make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's show time, going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's show time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's
go time. Go, go, Don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Real quick, oh. Real quick, yep. real quick, real quick. Shout out to the 72 Miami Dolphins. Eugene Mercury Morris. Rest in peace to Merc. Um, Mercury Morris was very vivacious. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the the mouth of defending the best team that ever played in football. Every time there would be a conversation or someone would try to have a conversation of the best team in football, Mercury Morris would come through and, and in, in his brightful way of shutting it down, um, he would shut it down. If, if you never heard Mercury Morris speak, find him on YouTube uh, and, and listen to him talk about the 72 Miami Dolphins. Uh, rest in peace. It's like the further the older we get, Kadeem, the more we're losing um, of members of that team. Yeah, definitely. Um, a sad day for the Dolphin community. Um, yeah, keeping it brief. Um, we kind of had this conversation, and I might have, to, I probably will have the conversation over on extra point, but I kind of want to have it now because everyone is saying it. Way too many Dolphin fans are saying it. Should the Dolphins draft a quarterback? Actually, no, no, I'm not going to do a draft. What do you make of people who are now saying the Dolphins should have picked up Justin Fields to back up to this year? Woulda, coulda, shoulda. None of it matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Uh, I thought it was great insurance policy. If you have a six-round pick that you could have for a backup quarterback for one season, <clears throat> I think it's worth it. It's a Super Bowl window. But that, that's just a waste of breath. Like, yo, it happened already. We missed it. We 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 blew it. Like, it's all right. We we missed. Um, and now we had to go circumvent and get bring in Huntley. Um, even though we didn't lose nothing to bring in Huntley, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't lose any assets to bring in Huntley, but it's it is what it is. Uh if the Dolphins could, could go back, I, I'm pretty sure they would have would have either drafted someone or brought in Justin Fields or even Russell Wilson, you know what I'm saying, when he was available. So it is what it is, man. Uh, now, and this is what I was saying, Kadeem, about at that time, I'm like, look, Tua is my quarterback. I'm going to pay Tua this season is what we were saying, was what I was saying. And not only that, I need Tua to be – and I remember I was like, yo, I need him to be in a headspace where he can perform. What I don't want is to bring in – Russell Wilson or Justin Fields and not pay Tua. And now you're not going to get the best out of your quarterback because he's like, yo, y'all going to pay me or what? And then it, it, I don't want that for my quarterback. I want I want a harmonious locker room. Everyone's getting paid. Hill got paid. He's got Hill. Waddle got paid. Everyone's getting paid. Yo, pay the, pay the guy who is your MVP. Now bring in someone behind him and have him be like, you know what? A professional, bro. You have to be comfortable. You you cannot get paid fifty two million dollars and worry about who's behind you. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I would have brought in one of them boys, but um, unfortunately, we didn't do it. Yeah, I think again, I remember I remember the discourse because we even had a back and forth about it. I remember the dis discourse at the time being Justin Fields stinks. No McDaniel could save him. Let him go to Pittsburgh. Like he still he still stunk though. But I still oh, yeah. would have brought him in because he was free. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But saying, like, why would you go and get Justin Fields for? Like, it's just a waste. Tua doesn't want competition. Go and Remember, the whole thing was go and find someone who can actually start. Go and find someone who, who can compete with Tua. And then because Justin Fields is 3-0, who I don't think he's lit the place up. He's just in a very, very good Steelers team because, once again, um, the head coach knows what he's doing. All of a sudden, it's like, actually, the Dolphins should go and get Russell Wilson because Justin Fields is the long-term starter in Pittsburgh. So no, I find it interesting that Justin Fields seems to be the one who is now people want to to come in and replace Tua when that wasn't the case like six seven months ago. Uh, it's not a uh, listen. Replace is a, is a strong word, but backup Tua would have been fine. Justin Fields doesn't he they they didn't really fix him. I, it's 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 a uh, it's fool's gold going on over there in Pittsburgh. But we gotta get up out of here, Kadeem.
Yeah, definitely. So until the next one, we shall see you soon. Peace. Thank you.